There is a 17-year-old German teen. Obviously, he's a teen. He's 17. Uh, He's been living life as a modern nomad. He left his parents' house to live on trains and travel all over the country. Uh, Last Dolly is his name. And uh, he's already been doing this for uh, over a year and a half. And he, you know, he's, he was done with school studies, he said. I, I guess I don't know how you do that at 16, but uh, he convinced his parents to let him leave the house and, and go on this train hopping adventure. Um, he said it took a lot of convincing, but they eventually caved in. And for the last year and a half, he has essentially been living on trains. He travels all over Germany, working as a self-employed computer coder during the day, and he sleeps on the trains at night. Uh, he said, uh, quote, at night I sleep on the moving inner city express train, and during the day I sit in a seat at a table and work as a programmer, surrounded by many other commuters and, pa- commuters and passengers. He says, I travel from one end of the country to the other. I'm exploring the whole of Germany. Um, I mean, I, you know, I get this whole resisting the urge to acquire all this new stuff, you know, that, that we feel is essential to our lifestyle. But he said he's got everything he needs with him. Anywhere he goes, that's what he's got. He has nothing but what's with him at all times. Hmm. Um, he said the most important thing is his laptop and his noise-canceling headphones. They, they at least give him a little privacy on the train, the headphones. He says his unusual living arrangement costs him about 10,000 euros per year. So I'm thinking if I spend $10,000 a year for living expenses, that's not bad. Right? That's pretty, pretty good. Yeah. When you consider everything we're paying for. Um, he said personal hygiene is a bit trickier. Uh, he has to shower in public swimming pools. Ooh. You, I'm like, public swimming pool? Are you using soap? In a public Probably swimming Probably in the shower area of a oh, public swimming pool. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, that makes more sense. That makes more sense. He said, oh, and leisure centers. He, he can clean at a leisure center. Um, says living on train is not ideal, but 17-year-old Last Dolly doesn't see himself doing it uh, for the rest of his life, but it works for now, and he still has much of Germany to see. Some people are real hardcore adventurers yeah. at heart. They're, I- you're right. There's a chick on YouTube that lived in a Prius for two years. Yeah, people love to do that, like retrofit a van, like then, pull out all the stuff in a van and then live in the van. Mm-hmm. Then she got a job. No, I'm kidding. No, I guess she had a job the entire time, but yeah. she used her phone, right. Wi-Fi. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't. It's a different lifestyle, that's for sure. sure. Say, you could the, save a lot of money. Did you read the book Into the Wild that John Krakauer no. wrote about Chris McCandless? He walked. He just basically left college and took off. I forget where he went to college, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, and walked into the Alaskan wilderness, and that was it. He ended up dying in there, but he was just so determined to be with nature like had that adventurer spirit and ended up dying what is, but wow. it's a great story it is really why i 100 uh, percent recommend reading cody said wild. on our text while my cousin did this for four years he's been missing for the last two. Oh no which Yikes. i wow you i mean it's certainly how much is it to shower at a truck stop? I mean, I know some of our truck driver listeners would know. Isn't it like a few bucks? You can oh, I didn't even yeah, know they I did that. I didn't even know that, ha- that I think happened. think you have to pay for a shower at a truck stop. So if you wanted to shower there, you could. that could cost you. Hmm. But this chick would drive around and find like natural streams and whatever else. Stephanie says, I have a friend who's basically a professional. Did you read that one already? Nope. It's per- basically a professional nomad. She has a 100% virtual job. She travels and goes on cruises and takes different trips and stays with different friends and does not have a permanent address. Wow, that's wild. All right, let's come back to this. Uh, you guys think about what, what kind of minimalist lifestyle would you be willing to try? <laughs> I, ha- I have an idea for myself. Uh, uh, and do you know anybody doing this that's the one a minimalist? That's the one that's not minimalist? <laughs> right. I'm I mean, not willing there... to try anything. No. I, the idea of minimalism makes me feel so much anxiety. I, I want to be the little old lady who lives out the rest of her days in a penthouse of a luxury hotel. <laughs> that's what I want my last days to be. Where can you do that? Uh, you can, well, I don't know. I bet any hotel would allow you to if you had enough money. They used to do it. Uh... Yeah, in Manhattan, in San Francisco, there's this um, hotel called the Fairmont Hotel. Um, they used to, the penthouse used to be a residence. And there was this little old mining heiress named Maud Flood. Maud Flood. Who lived there for 28 years. She got really lonely. 
in her mansion in San Francisco. Oh, okay. So she gave it over to the nuns. This is way back in the day. She hmm. died in 1966. So she handed it over to the nuns, and she moved into this penthouse of the Fairmont Hotel and lived there for 28 years until she died. Now, that I can really see doing something like that. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you, never, you still want the luxury of Luxury, life. baby, all the way. And they're staying in a hotel like that. The ones I stay at usually rent by the hour. I'm not sure yeah. if they have a penthouse, <laughs> but I guess I can ask no, if they have an outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> What about you? Would you be into this idea? Minimalist? Yeah. I have tried to trim some fat, and I'm not just talking about my dad bod. Um, <laughs> I'm talking about, like, just, you know, clutter and stuff. I don't think I could. I really, truly don't think I could do the minimalist lifestyle. I do like clean when it comes to, like, houses and furniture and stuff like that. But I would want to live. There's a couple places I've always wanted to live in. Uh, there was a... Movie from the 90s about skiing, I can't remember it, but the two dudes lived in a train caboose. That was their apartment, and I thought that was kind of cool. Oh, that is cool. Like the boxcar kids, yeah, children, sort of. or whatever. What were those books? The boxcar children? But they, yeah, they had a train car, and they had it retrofitted into an apartment, and I thought that was kind of cool. And then there was also, um, I always thought living in a lighthouse would be kind of cool. A lighthouse, all right. But all of that was um, changed after I saw Top Gun Maverick, and Maverick lived in an aircraft hangar, and I thought that would be <laughs> super cool because you'd have enough room for all your cars to park in there. You could kind of deck it out as a loft-style apartment in a... Um, yeah, I don't think you can call that minimalism. No, you can't call it minimalism, but I thought it would just be a cool place to live. What about living on a cruise? A lot of people do that. That'd be so good. This is absolutely the opposite of minimalist, but a midnight buffet for the rest of my life, I <laughs> would live on a cruise, I think. Although would I you don't... be awake for the midnight buffet? <laughs> Probably not. You're right. You're a good call. Good call. So I... Might be a waste of my money. But you a know... lunch buffet, you're all in. <laughs> yes. But you know what? That's funny because, uh, you know, my, my in-laws retired, and now they, they are up all night long. It's a trip they're they're like teenagers man they you know they want to sleep all day and they stay up all night it's hilarious so when you retire kelly there's there are no hours anymore it's just whenever you want to get up and don't want to be up it doesn't That's matter right. you can stay up past 7 30 could you guys live on like a miami vice don johnson situation in a boat yes that's what i was gonna say oh okay, okay. I, that's the one i could do that. houseboat uh, uh, yeah like a what is that noise my keys. Sorry. Oh. A houseboat? <laughs> yeah, like a houseboat. Uh, we had uh, Jason text in. He said he lived on a 24-foot cabin cruiser boat for a summer. And he said, if I lived in a warmer climate, I could do that year-round. And oh, I cool. am with Jason on that. I could definitely do okay, that. Okay. Do you experience any type of seasickness or weird, nope. like, dizziness or anything like that? No. That would really suck, being as much as I love to fish on yeah. that boat. That would really But you don't ever it? have, like, no, the imbalance uh-uh. of the... Okay. What if you decided to take your houseboat out for a swim, maybe like a three-hour tour, and you got <laughs> lost? Oh, <laughs> and you were cool. stranded on an island with Ginger <laughs> and a professor, and Marianne. Yeah, Marianne. <laughs> and perhaps you had one of your rich friends and his wife mm-hmm. come on the boats too, <laughs> and a little buddy, <laughs> a little buddy. <laughs> uh, Chelsea had a good one. She said, um, uh, "Modern day gypsies. If I didn't have kids, I'd do the same thing. Before kids, I just live going from place to place. What?" No, one oh. more example of how kids ruin it for everybody. Oh, yeah. Uh, she said, I just lived going from place to place all over Ohio and stayed with different people. It was the most fun I've ever had and wish I could go back often. It was stressful at times, but looking back, I was less stressed then than I have been in the last six years. It takes a certain type of person with, like I said, an adventurer's spirit. To be able to live like that, to just go from place to place is kind of an adventure every day or every week. And you're kind of up for the challenge of the next, you know, the next place to go or whatever. That is, I don't have that at all in my heart. Right. Um, I don't ever want to wonder what the next thing is. I want it all planned out. Like, I, that's my type of situation. But I sort of love that. I love the idea of people wanting to connect with adventure Mm -hmm. and uh nature and things like that i think it's it's very cool perhaps if i won the mega millions i would buy my aircraft hangar and uh, there you go retrofitted into a home there you go can i store my boat there 
Sure. If oh, okay. you mentioned off the air, but you haven't mentioned it on the air, so I'll mention it for you. You said maybe a lighthouse you'd like to live in. I did. You I did think, say it on the air. I did say it on the air. Oh, oops. Sorry. I thought you said... Dollar in the jar. A couple minutes ago. When did you say it? You guys are both on a roll today. I heard it. It was just a couple no, minutes ago. you got a dollar in the jar for repeating. Yeah, you repeated yeah, like two yeah, or three yeah, things. Maybe yeah. I thought we were off the air when we were actually on the air. <laughs> that happens a lot. I mean, like, because we just continue oh conversations in here. We, are there, we go to song. We go to break. Sorry. We're still no, talking okay. and doing show. I, this is going to be a dumb question. And as an Ohio kid, I'm ashamed for answer, for even asking it. Are there lighthouses anywhere in Ohio? Yes. Uh-huh. Marblehead mm-hmm. on Lake Erie. Yeah. yeah. On the lake. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. I just wasn't sure. There are. Okay. I was yeah, probably down on the Ohio River, I'm assuming. Marietta, maybe. I don't know. I just I don't ever remember seeing anyone. That's why I was or never going anywhere that there would be one, but I would just be kind of curious. I just thought Lifehouse or Lifehouse. Lighthouse would be kind of cool. Yeah, I agree. A uh, nice view at the top. Tara Tara maybe. says Go ahead. Oh, Tara says, I just want to live on a farm, grow all my own produce, have all the farm animals. In a place where every day feels like spring. Is that too much to ask? I'm sure it's really easy, oh, LOL. Oh, my God. And when, you, when you say grow your own produce, do you mean weed, like a nice weed crop in the back? <laughs> well, along with the lettuce and carrots and stuff, sure. <laughs> I mean, if I got a farm, why not? I you can't know. even handle one dog. I can't imagine having to handle a farm and <laughs> animals and plowing yeah. and harvesting. And, oh, Popcorn that like Pam a lot of work. said a perfect 850 square foot house in a great backyard. I, you know what I've come to learn in life? And maybe you guys are the same way. If you have a bigger place, I think there's something that takes over that you feel the need to fill it. Like even if you have enough furniture, it. I don't know that you can just be content with having like an excessive amount of space. You know what I mean? Like, if you have a bigger house, you're, oh, I got to buy a shelf to put there. Oh, I got to buy a bookcase to put over here. You know what I mean? You start filling space and accumulating things. Maybe, I do I'm... like my stuff. I really do. I don't shame anyone who likes stuff. <laughs> you know, listen, I need a television. I need Wi-Fi. I need a computer. I need my phone. I need a very comfortable place to sleep. I have to have an indoor bathroom. Like, I must okay. have facilities. Um, I need heat. I need air conditioning. Like, I, those are non-negotiable for me. I feel like all of those things you just said, though, you could have in a 15 by 15 room. Um, I, I also have claustrophobia. <laughs> so that, to me, okay. sounds extremely tight. Lots of windows. Nope. <laughs> Mike said you need handyman skills to live in a lighthouse. Yeah. It's a requirement. And Mary said there's a lighthouse on 71. Is there on really? On 71. You'll have to look that I'll up. I'll have to look for that. I think the other thing, too, Kelly, to your point, not everybody's capable now of the way the world has shaped up. Living off the grid is a lot tougher yeah. than it used to. You know what I mean? Like, there was a time where if you didn't have a, a pager or whatever or a phone, they couldn't get a hold of you. Now, like, oh, I'll try to call. No, nope, no answer. I'll text. No, nope, no answer. Oh, yeah. I'll Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, send yeah. you a message 50 different ways <laughs> right. to track you down. I would know, love to know what it's like to take a vacation and be off the grid for a few days. I think I can handle that. Uh, yeah. I've done that. It's great. Here's something that in- has always intrigued me. I like to read the stories about homesteaders who move to Alaska and just try to make it like off the grid. I am interested in those stories. I cannot be one of those people, but I love the stories of it. Would you rather try to live off the grid someplace warm or someplace cold? Warm, 100%. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I I, I couldn't be cold. I can't start my own fire. (laughs) (laughs) Especially, uh, yeah, if I'm going to live on a boat. It's going to have to be somewhere warm. Okay. Definitely. Uh, let's see. We got a text that says, Rick would be good as long as he has somewhere to put his chandelier. All right. Whatever. <laughs> What's up, Lewis? You guys going to be okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Why? <laughs> you are anything but fine. No, Thick won't even do the topic because he's so mad at me for not looking at a picture that he has of a, of a luxury RV that I told him. Okay, here's the story. I told him if I'm in an RV, nobody's pooping in the RV. Like, there's a no pooping rule in the RV. What? You know, they have those signs. Rule number one, no number two. That is hanging in my RV. You're not pooping in there. So Thick Rick is trying to convince me that pooping is okay if it's a giant RV that, that like, folds out into a massive structure, but I'm it saying... a full bathroom with it, a vent and a fan, just like your bathroom <laughs> at home. I'm saying if it has wheels on it, if if the if the home has wheels on it, you're not pooping in there. 
Boy, it's a good thing so, you don't live in a mobile home. It is. Well, oh, well, that's true. You're right about that. Okay, Jeez. wait, let me rethink. Wheel. Let me tell you what. So if it's 100,000 square feet. It's got wheels. No. Nope. I'm me... saying if you're regularly driving something on the highway, not if it's planted as a home. If, you, if you're living in a trailer or a double wide or whatever, that's not moving. You're not moving around. If I'm driving on the highway and I'm going from state to state and I'm traveling in a modest RV, a modest RV, I'm not talking about a home. I'm right. talking about a modest RV where there's just like one hallway and a couple of seats. All right, mm-hmm. and a bathroom. You're not taking a crap in there. You're what, not doing it. Can, can you? Are, what if you pull over? No. Well, then you're not well, driving. If you pull over, it's going to be at a rest stop, so you can go to the bathroom. Blitz <laughs> Nation does not understand the visual. So allow me for just a moment to paint the picture of this. Kelly is having nothing to do with this. Like, I mean, she won't even get up out of the chair and walk across the counter to look at the luxury RV that Rick has spent the last 15 minutes pulling up and examining to the point where he. Now knows enough about it that he could give it a hard sell to somebody who oh, was I in the market. This thing in a heartbeat. Thank you. So anyway, he's like, but Kelly, you don't understand. The sides they open up, so it turns into like an extra twenty-five square feet. Like I mean, he has the whole sales pitch down, and she's having nothing to do with it. And he looks so sad. It's like someone threw a rock through the window and shattered his chandelier. She, just, she wouldn't even look at no. the picture because I know all it's meant to do is for you to prove a point, and I don't want to allow you that luxury of proving a point. So I just want to have friend. my opinion. <laughs> I want to have my opinion on a normal sized RV. I'm not talking about a luxury situation. I'm talking about a normal RV where we're tooling down the road in something that's just a little larger than a than a van. You're not pooping in there. I'm sorry. And I don't care what situation you've got in a picture over there that you want to show me. I'm not looking at it because that's not the situation I'm talking about. Uh, and so we're of, having a massive fight over it, and then Rick threw up his hands and he goes, "Forget it. We'll do a different we'll topic." A different topic. <laughs> well, I, did, I thought you didn't want. You said I don't want to talk about it. I don't, don't want to hear about I it. I don't want to hear about your luxury situation. Well, I, over I, there. I took that as you didn't want to have this discussion. Okay, you were well, done you, with it. I'll do this. I'll we'll do something else. I asked Nikki, him to still do it, and he said, "No, I'm not going to do it. You won't even look at my picture." Nikki Newland said, "I'm not sure if I'm amused <laughs> or terrified after this conversation." <laughs> Uh, I have to thank Dave from Plain City who added to my story and said that I'd also be fed pork chops through a straw. <laughs> See, Lisa says, we don't poop in our RV. We go to the campground bathrooms. Thank you, Lisa. That is exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, Steve, I mean, wait, wait. Steve said, Kelly, I'm going to poop out the window of your Winnebago. <laughs> I'd rather have you do that, (laughs) bud. Do you guys, speaking of this subject, you know, you realize I typed out a text but didn't send it yesterday because I wanted to let you both know that I, that everything was good with my regularity. (laughs) Like I was, because remember I said, what if I, because we were talking about earlier, what if I manifest something into happening and I don't go when I'm doing Oh, yes, yes, yes. I I went on bathroom time, time, about the time of day you go. Went on time yesterday. Oh, so you almost texted both of you, but I decided not to. You better hope you're not in my Winnebago when nature calls. I'm actually with you on this. One. Thank you. Thank you. Because it is a small, confined space. It's not that small. It, it is. is very not small. Not the one I'm looking at. Okay, right, there's no. He's the, talking about something you plant somewhere in an RV and you're going to stay for six months and you're going to no. pull everything out and you're going to have like an 1,800 no. square foot situation. That's not true. My having, sister has one of these. They go everywhere and all these oh, different campgrounds, they stay for a weekend. It opens up. It's got a full size bathroom with a vent and a fan just like an apartment would. Uh-uh. Okay, I don't do, a, I won't go on planes either unless it's an absolute emergency. I mean, we were talking about a no turn back situation. I'll use that's fine. But having without name dropping, having been on a few very nice tour buses, I can tell you the bathroom is still not that big and there's not a lot of space in there. And I don't want to be the guy that evacuates the RV because a hazmat cloud is rolling through. It's got a vent just like your bathroom. Dominic says Kelly's probably got a chandelier in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's thick Rick and his sister with their fancy stuff over there. I'm talking about a regular person's RV, right. a normal person's <laughs> RV that doesn't pop out into a 2,800 square foot home. Well, I don't know about 2,800 square feet, but most of them do pop out now. Dr. Dennis says Kelly needs a gummy. Holy. <laughs> You're right. You're Somebody... right. I need to settle down. I don't even have an RV. What am I worried about? <laughs> Your rock station, 99.7. The Blitz. <laughs>